Hi, this is Shivara Jaya from VitalCoaching.com. We are talking about uh, vital sex and tantric sex, and the topic for this video is mono, duo, and polyamory. Five things you must know about that. Actually, it's much more. It might be seven things. Yeah. Um, you know what? Uh, <laughs> this is one of the, the most... Um, challenging topics that you might be exposed to when it comes to the use of your sexual energy. It is how open are you to having experiences with other people and how open do you want your partner to be to other people as well. So it has to do with relationship boundaries. What is the frame that you function with? So I'm just going to define for you the words mono, duo and poly. Mono is actually when you're single. Duo is when you have a committed relationship with one person. And poly is when you are in a situation where you are more in free flow and have multiple lovers. So when we talk about multiple lovers, it doesn't mean that you are having sex with multiple people. Sometimes you are going to share different levels of intimacy with a person. It doesn't mean that you engage with that person sexually and have intercourse. But you might have, you know, a deep emotional connection with somebody. So very often the way it is defined you are in a situation of polyamory when you're actually having sex with other people uh, but guess what you know for instance you might not be having intercourse but you might be sharing some sexual energy through kisses or uh, genital touch or you know being naked together and so what is the exact uh, you know the exact limit there most of the times uh, just a friendship or uh, is is not going to be polyamory but as soon as you start engaging with sexual energy and there is exchange of sensuality within a context which is just you know uh, free flow not in the context of a workshop for instance then uh, that's usually defined as polyamory you might be with a friend the moment you start kissing that person then there is a sexual exchange there is a sensual exchange and that qualifies certainly that as a new sexual relationship with that person and so um you know those are general definitions gen general ideas and there is a lot of discussion of course on uh, on this topic because it's uh, you know lots of people start getting attracted by the idea of um, sharing sex with more than than one person and uh, it can work you know many people are extremely successful in leading a polyamorous life but you know it's not for for everybody so that's the the first thing to understand it is that we as human beings have a lot of diversity and lots of possibilities and what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for everybody Okay, right now the model of being in committed relationships still represents probably uh, the ideal model for maybe 90 to 95 percent of people on this planet, officially. Okay, what I'm saying is that in the building blocks of creating a family and having children and uh, you know moving in together with your lover, your partner becomes your 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 wife or husband. Uh, in most uh, aspects of society both in the west and in the east it's still the number one model that is being applied so probably 90 percent of people on this planet live with this model then you have quite a few societies that are uh, polyamory friendly or polygamous you know where polygamy is uh, is natural and accepted that represents a small fraction of what's going on, on on this planet as well and then you have the polyamory community which is um, you know the new trend of actually experimenting with having multiple lovers but what is very important is that in my experience coaching couples and individuals not everybody's fit to be in a polyamorous relationship so if you have if you're trying to defend uh, one or the other either polyamory or monoamory or duoamory as a lifestyle it's uh, you're wasting your time because um, every human being is different and so the first step is really to respect other people's um, opinions and desires and feelings around that if uh, a woman with who you want to be lover and you're a guy and you think wow you know we would be ideal for each other but I have to force her into a polyamorous situation because I am polyamorous it's like you might be wasting your time if she if what she wants is a committed relationship so there is no need for her to be forced into your agenda or for her to force you into her agenda it simply means that there is a certain degree there of incompatibility it's good to accept these differences rather than to force the totality of humankind into one given model which is just the result of your own agenda 
okay so respect is very important when when it comes to that um, another aspect which is important is that it's not just polyamory like a block a square which is fixed uh, when it comes to polyamory or monoamory you might have different degrees of, of freedom and um, for instance you might be in a polyamorous situation it means that you are open to the idea of having sex with other people uh, but you might not use that freedom you know you might become naturally sexually exclusive because actually you have no desire to look beyond the relationship you know that the freedom is there you know that the door is open but you're not going to use that freedom because it's with your primary lover that you want to be and with who you feel the most comfortable and the most fulfilled so you are in a polyamorous situation but you are simply not using that freedom there is a natural tendency also to become sexually exclusive for instance if you have some uh, a sexual relationship with somebody that works really well maybe the the tendency to explore other options might might not be there in terms of how much you share about it also there are lots of different boundaries some people don't want to hear anything about other sexual ad adventures that you might be engaged into and somebody else might be uh, you know what i i want to hear about it because i find it exciting and it turns me on so again there it's all it all has to do with conversation and communication clear communication with your partner and designing the boundary space having boundary conversations that are you know very clear and uh, interesting for your couple um, you know the idea of dual relationships or that would be called uh, mono monogamy or um, mono amory as well when you are just with one person one partner um, very often people will say that uh, that's a context in which you can dive much deeper in the relationship because there is a commitment there is an investment that is different than when you are spread when you spread your love over different people so my opinion on that is slightly different i know lots of committed couples who don't dive very deep and lots of uh, polyamorous couples who who dive very deep and um, much deeper actually precisely because in you're in polyamorous relationships so the fact that you are just in you know as a couple doesn't mean that you are going to go necessarily deep and uh, i don't find personally that it opens necessarily the doors to uh, a deeper connection sometimes the the limiting factors that stop you from diving really deep with somebody has nothing to do with being in polyamory or monoamory situations um, another aspect is that um, you know you can summarize it like that claiming somebody is sexy there is a certain degree of uh, of sexiness and erotic intensity when you go to somebody and say to that person it's with you I want to be so the sense of commitment and the sense of uh, claiming and the sense of uh, willingness to be just just with one person there is a certain degree of sexual intensity that can be also very interesting for somebody to experience and uh, sometimes much more interesting than if you are just very casual and say yeah of course you can go and sleep with whoever you want it doesn't matter i don't really care you know that's not necessarily the best message that your lover wants to receive very often going like you know what i like the juice i want to concentrate my energy on what we're experiencing right now and um and i don't like the idea of anybody else touching you so when you express a form of claim like this one with uh, sexual intensity there is a certain degree of you know power direction and uh, a little bit almost like of sensual dominance as well that can be very interesting for to create connection in your relationship uh, another point uh, that is very important to understand is that um, a lot of relationships many relationships that claim to be uh, monogamous or you know monoamory or duoamory what I call duoamory now are not actually living to their standards because you will have cheating episodes so these cheating Christ situations are not the exception most people on this planet will be exposed at one point or another with a cheating episode whether it comes from them 
or from the, the lover. So what that means is that uh, cheating is very common and it's common for both men and women. Okay, it's not just uh, guys going out on, a, on some journey and some adventure. So that's something else to keep in mind and to remember. Uh, another important element to remember is that, uh, you know, if you have been married and committed like for a period of two, three years, and then you decide to divorce and you go with somebody else on the short scale, on a short time period, you are in mono or duo amory situation. But if you uh, look at the wider scale on the period of your life, you might have end up having like five long term relationships and um, multiple marriages. So does that make you duo amory or polyamory type? That's a good question because there are lots of people on this planet who after one, two, three years, they get bored of their marriage or their relationship and they need to shift to go into something else. So it's not polyamorous on the short term, but it is polyamorous when you look at the scale on the totality of the life. So, um, yeah, there's lots of interesting concepts to check. You know, right now I'm not telling you what to do or not to do. I'm just sharing some insights and ideas about this topic and uh, maybe starting a little bit of a conversation on that. What's your preference for yourself? What do you feel is right for you? What do you feel works for your lovers, for the people in your life? And um, what do you think is the ideal situation for your own existence? Um, you know, one, one way of uh, blocking the discussion is really to say, this is how humankind should behave and this is how we should do it all together. No, think for yourself. This is what I prefer. Use I statements and you will see that the discussion becomes much more constructive. See you soon.